Yesterday we talked a great deal about the NFL returning to Los Angeles. And we had the folks on from the Bring Back the Rams Foundation, the group that does Bring Back the Rams. And KCRW, the public radio station, Warren Olney hosts the show. Now let me tell you how old Warren Olney is. I was a kid when he was working at Channel 4. So Warren Olney has been around, and his show on the radio is highly acclaimed. And I've made the comment on this program many times that there's no way the people in Inglewood are not going to pass this measure that will allow them to repurpose that land for the football stadium. It's already approved for retail and residential. But now I said there'd be no way, absolutely no possible way, that the people in Inglewood would vote this down. Because it only makes sense. It's a brilliant plan. It helps revitalize Inglewood. Well, apparently somebody doesn't agree. And her name is Diane Sombrano. She was on KCRW, and she's a longtime resident of Inglewood. And in her opinion, this is not a good idea. And she thinks that there's some underhanded play going on here. I want to let you hear what Diane Zambrano had to say. First of all, she said, sure, the public was told about this, but were they really told about it? There is the imagery that there have been a lot of meetings for the public. Those were selected mail-out meetings so that the general public did not know when they were taking place. Only certain people received those notifications. And, of course, those meetings pretty much were a presentation without necessarily the opportunity to look at the full 195-page document. So in the past, we have experienced the switch and bait thing where in years gone by, we were supposed to have that Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, the police station, all those things when the last time the stadium was proposed to us. So we tend to say we're not going to get what you tell us the first go-round. We somehow always end up giving tax incentives and tax credits, and we, the residents, absorb a significant impact on all that. Now, I'll tell you why I'm troubled by this, because they have longtime resident who's certainly entitled to her opinion, Diane Sombrano coming on and making some statements. I don't know how valid they are. This is like we're coming up with a story, and we're going to get somebody to speak out and disagree with it. And we're going to pick you, Diane Sombrano, to do so. And again, she's entitled to her opinion. I have no problem with her opinion. I just don't think it's it's rooted in fact. I don't think she's talking about what truly is, and I believe that she's not understanding what is best. I'm not running for office in Inglewood, and I don't live there. But I think you would have to live under a rock not to understand that this is a very good thing for the city of Inglewood. She also commented on traffic. We also have to point out that as LAX begins to grow and expand its operations, now projected well over that 78.9 map, there's going to be more traffic that has been considered in the past. So there will be traffic. There will be noise. There is that tax credit incentive. And all of those come back to a community that will probably not easily be able to afford going to any of these games. Now, I'll tell you why she's a 1,000% wrong about the majority of that statement. A community that may not be able to go to the games or afford it. I'll buy that. I'll sign off on that. But are you telling me that the job creation in Englewood is not beneficial to the people of Englewood? I don't think you can make that statement. I mean, how can you say creating jobs in that area, giving people an opportunity to work, Driving business there is not a good thing. And if you're saying, well, traffic is going to get worse, baby, you live in Southern California. It's going to get worse every day. It doesn't matter where you live. It's going to be bad. I don't buy that again. Then she was asked if she considered the forum renovation successful. Well, I guess the residents of our community would wonder why we had to give a forgiven loan of $18 million to make that a reality. So you think it cost you money? I know it did. Is it a problem? Well, considering we have parks that need servicing, we terminated something like or asked to retire 50 employees, so our infrastructure does have a truckload of issues. That $18 million could have actually benefited the residents of this community. Really? Is that so? 
it seems to me that that $18 million does benefit the residents of that community simply by driving traffic there and allowing business to prosper there. And unless I'm wrong, and I could be, but unless I'm wrong, I think the city of Inglewood receives taxes from the forum as they would from the new football facility. I think the city benefits greatly in that. Unless I'm mistaken, that's to the tune, if the football stadium is built, of more than $25 million a year in basically found revenue to the city of Inglewood. Now, unless somebody put $25 million in a bag and put it in the parking lot and told us where it was, we can go pick it up. I don't think you can find that very easily. So, to me, this, and I KCRW does a fantastic job. They're highly respected. But if you want to start nitpicking and grabbing somebody who will counter what's going on, you can always do that. I'm bringing this up today because it is a story, and people are talking about it. We've extended an invitation to our buddy, Mayor Butts. Hello, Mayor. How are you doing, Fred? Good. You, so you bigfooted us yesterday. That's not cool. I, I didn't bigfoot you. I, you know what? I heard the, the replay of your uh, broadcast at night, and I tried to call you thinking you were live. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm going to give you that because you were in an important meeting yesterday, weren't you, Mayor? The MTA board. And, and you were put on the commission, right? I was elected by the Southwick, Southwest Corridor Cities to be their representative. Yes, I was. That's pretty big. It's huge. And what does that mean? Well, the, you know, the, the MTA board is overseeing the largest construction project in Southern California. It's a $14.5 billion transportation project, uh, several projects. The, the rail line, bus transportation, highway repairs, it, it's big. All right. So, Mayor, what I want to do is I want to play for you parts of this interview from KCRW. I'm going to give you a chance to respond, okay? Okay. I believe the woman's name was Diane Zambrano. Now, do you know Zambrano. who she is? Yes, I do. Who is she? Dan Sombrano is uh, one of our council regulars. She comes to every council meeting, every school board meeting. Uh, she's never been happy about anything that we've done in the last four years. She thought the form was a waste and, and was opposed to the form, and it became the number one uh, concert venue in the greater L.A. area. Um, she's against everything. Okay. So I don't know why you pissed off Diane Zambrano, Mayor. <laughs> I didn't do anything to piss her off, but I just am, I guess. Okay. Well, let's let you hear what she had to say. We'll start with cut one about the public meetings that weren't so public. There is the imagery that there have been a lot of meetings for the public. Those were selected mail-out meetings so that the general public did not know when they were taking place. Only certain people received those notifications. And, of course, those meetings pretty much were a presentation without necessarily the opportunity to look at the full 195-page document. So in the past, we have experienced the switch-and-bait thing where in years gone by, we were supposed to have that Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, the police station, all those things when the last time the stadium was proposed to us. So we tend to say we're not going to get what you tell us the first go-round. We somehow always end up giving tax incentives and tax credits, and we, the residents, absorb a significant impact on all that. Mayor, your response. Wow. Okay, where do we start? First of all, I don't know anything about a Dorothy Chandler Pavilion or a police station or what have you, as you, as you know, that none of that is in this initiative. But as far as secret meetings, there have probably been, I would say, no less than 25 or 30 meetings held on this topic at uh, police community centers, at community room A and City Hall, at the library lecture hall, um, at the uh, meeting rooms at the casino. Uh, there have been town hall meetings uh, by the individual district council people held, and I would say no less than probably, ooh, Oh, excuse me, and at churches. So I'd say no less than probably 5,000, no, think I back, 7,000 people directly have heard presentations, and then others have been had their doors knocked on by their neighbors and some by uh, p professional uh, signature gatherers mm -hmm. and had the project explained to them. So if it's a secret, it's the worst. It's a secret between probably us and 22,000 people. All right, well, stop keeping secrets. Right. Let's go to cut two. Here's your problem, Mayor. 
Diane says traffic's going to get really bad. We also have to point out that as LAX begins to grow and expand its operations, now projected well over that 78.9 map, there's going to be more traffic that has been considered in the past. So there will be traffic, there will be noise, there is that tax credit incentive. And all of those come back to a community that will probably not easily be able to afford going to any of these games. Mayor? Wow. Okay, look, LAX is a mile and a half from Inglewood. Uh, in fact, uh, traffic is just scheduled to get back up to about 65 million passengers, uh, down from a high of over 70 million uh, 10 years ago. Traffic is coming back to the airport, but again, they're a mile and a half from Inglewood. And then as far as traffic, when the racetrack was in its heyday, they had crowds of 60,000 at a peak. They usually average 38 to 41,000, and that would be up against uh, outbound for that, up against 17,658, sell out at the Forum for a Laker game. So we regularly had traffic flows of 60,000 persons in this area, and we've done it for decades. But you know the difference between uh, then and now? We were more prosperous then because we had people in cars coming here. And they, and they contributed money to our general fund because they spent money, they bought gas, uh, they, they ate at our restaurants, and we were more prosperous. Let me tell you this. You go to Pasadena, Santa Monica, Culver City, ask them if they want their traffic to go away. Because, when, because if it does, the money goes away that goes to the general fund. So that's, it's, it's, that's an absurdity to say that you're going to give away prosperity for your city, not to mention 10,000 construction jobs, 12,000 permanent jobs between uh, part-time and full-time jobs when all that office space opens. This is just um, See, Mayor, incredible ma to me. Ma Mayor Buds, you don't get it. I, I mean, you just don't understand. <laughs> don't, don't, can't you appreciate the fact what Diane Zambrano was saying? <laughs> forget the jobs, forget the income. I mean, traffic's going to be bad. But let's get to the next cut, Mayor. Okay. Maybe you'll do a better job with this one. Because obviously Diane really knows her stuff. Okay. You're right. Uh, she talked about renovation overall in Inglewood. Listen to this. Well, I guess the residents of our community would wonder why we had to give a forgiven loan of $18 million to make that a reality. So you think it cost you money? I know it did. Is it a problem? Well, considering we have parks that need servicing, we terminated something like or asked to retire 50 employees, so our infrastructure does have a truckload of issues, that $18 million could have actually benefited the residents of this community. Mayor, she was talking about the renovation of the forum. How do you respond to that? That's unfortunate because she knows what she's saying is absolutely untrue. First of all, the $18 million that she refers to was a rehabilitation loan let out of our redevelopment agency. Redevelopment agencies have been disbanded across Southern California. But one of the last things we were able to do was use money that was solely meant to provide an economic stimulus for a community. We could not have used that money for the infrastructure of our parks. We could not have used it for anything but an economic stimulus. We gave it to, we loaned it to Madison Square Gardens as a rehabilitation loan with the proviso that they would purchase the form and they purchased it for $23 million, and then spent at least $50 million rehabilitating the forum. They spent $100 million. Now, putting that into perspective, if we had not used that money, it would have gone back to the state of California, and we would have had nothing for it. Uh, we, there would have been a, a division of, of proceeds, and we would have got $3 million of the 18, and we instead have the forum open. It's the number one concert venue. We are guaranteed in our development agreement to receive an average of 600000 a year over a three-year average. So that means in less than five years, we will have had the $3 million that we could have gotten by turning the money back over to the state of California. And if they're in business for five years, 50% of the loan is forgiven. If they're in business 10 years, 100% of the loan is forgiven. But by that time, we'll have made so much more money, but think about this. There are 600 Inglewood residents that have jobs today that mm -hmm. didn't have them January 15th when the forum opened. Um, think about what it's done for the economy here in Inglewood, all of our restaurants, our stores, when, when 17,000 people come to events at the forum. Look what it did to the viability of the Hollywood Park Tomorrow Project that lay fallow since 2009 until we signed that development agreement for the forum, and they received pledges of investment from that point on, and then they broke ground. 
they broke ground, and then later on they became partners with the Cronky Group. Now we're talking about having a football stadium. So would I ever have, have second-guessed us investing in, in Madison Square Garden, open, opening their only West Coast operation here in the city of Inglewood? I would, I would do that ten times over. Mayor James T. Butts of Inglewood is with us here on the Beast 980. Well, Mayor, I'm glad you came on and you tried to put this to bed. L let me tell you something. We have been here at the Super Bowl all week. All indications, more than ever before, every guest we've had point to this going through, the Rams moving. And I know this is on the ballot, and I know the citizens of Inglewood are going to pass this. Now, you can't say yet because it's not done, mm -hmm. but I've told you privately I think it's a done deal. Fred, Fred, I told you you're the most knowledgeable sports person in the world. <laughs> Mayor, I appreciate you coming on today. Thanks for the time. Thanks for addressing this, and I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, could I tell you one more thing, Fred? Yeah, go ahead. This is going to be the West Coast new sports and entertainment destination. It's going to be of no cost to the taxpayer. We'll never write a check out of the general fund for this. Any infrastructure reimbursements will be out of money we never would have had after we get $25 million in a given year. So I just want to make that clear to anybody that's listening. To all this hocus-pocus about incentives and tax credits, a tax credit is just that. It's money you never would have had but for the economic activity. Amen, Mayor. I'm right. with you. Fred, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Have a great weekend. And we're back with more from the Super Bowl in Phoenix on the Beast 980.